uh, the contribution from Taha as well as from Tantrade uh, is, 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 is remarkable. And uh, uh, now we see some of the achievement, the quick achievement. I think such kind of spirit need to be uh, uh, scaled up to other uh, sector. So without wasting our time, uh, I would like now to have a very quick uh, uh, pull. And uh, this must, can you please share the pull so that we can, we can capture some of the information from our uh, stakeholders. Yeah, we need to, to have some insight. Uh, where are you coming from? Which sector? So that it will be easy uh, to continue during the, the engagement of our today's webinar. This must have, please. Hello. Yes, please. Um, yeah, uh, we would like to welcome Mr. Anthony Chamanga so that he can introduce Hebron. After Hebron's presentation, we will launch the polls um, so that we can get to know um, about the attendees. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dismas. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like you to invite. Mr. Anton to proceed uh, to moderate the first part of our today's uh, uh, engagement. Anton, over to you, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Safari. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am very pleased to uh, moderate the first session on presentation of results of uh, a series of value chains on or a, a series of um, of presentations um, on studies uh, that we have um, undertook. Uh, so the first presentation is on Tanzania uh, fresh value, value, fresh avocado value chain analysis. And uh, uh, typically uh, this is a study about uh, the current situation of Tanzania avocado uh, fresh sector. Uh, from the southern highlands of Tanzania, especially in Jombe, Iringa, and Bea, uh, to, to, to the northern parts in Arusha and Kilimanjaro. Uh, this study has documented key uh, aspects uh, that relate to especially uh, avocado production. What, what is the current status when it comes to uh, production and the key uh, challenges and the opportunities uh, in the avocado uh, value chain. Uh, so uh, with us is Mr. Hebron Makalinga. Uh, he is uh, very well known, uh, one of the uh, consultants in the uh, top caliber group. And uh, he will present us on the findings uh, of the study uh, for about uh, 30 minutes. And after that, we will uh, have a brief discussion uh, on the presentation. So, uh, Hebron, uh, please, you're welcome. Hello, Safari. Morning. Yes, Hebron. Uh, yeah, can you help me see the screen? Yes, Can you help me share, share my screen? Yes, go ahead and share. Uh, host disabled to share screen, please. Maybe we try again. Yes, try again. Hello? Yes, please try again. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone who is online at this moment. My name is Hebron Mwakalinga from a company called Market Axis. Uh, right now, I'm speaking from Dar es Salaam. 
And today I'm honored to present uh, two studies. One is the analysis of the fresh avocado sector in Tanzania. And the second will be the EU market analysis, which was done by my colleague, Alan. Um, first, I should start thanking Sorry. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, you can see, yes, you can see your screen. Go ahead. Oh, it's not moving. Yes. Just a second. I'm trying to scroll there. Uh, it says, uh, Okay. Uh, first, I should thank you very much, ITC and the Taha, for the confidence in hiring me to carry out the study, uh, as well as all those people who contributed in the material and the knowledge form starting with the Taha itself, ITC, uh, companies that are based in Dar es Salaam, and all those actors uh, in upcountry. We received a lot of support, which managed to get this report out in its form. It's a more than 100 page report. Uh, fortunately, some of you might have read the report and made some recommendations or comments um, grat I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And I hope after today's session, the same report will be shared for further improvement. Today's presentation is divided in eight parts. Uh, I'll briefly talk of the introduction and background, the approach, uh, and then we'll look at the avocado production trends and patterns in Tanzania. Then we'll quickly go through the who are there in the value chain. Uh, fifth, we'll look at what government entities are playing um, within the value chain. Then we'll look at the export trade trends. And more importantly, the revenue and the cost streams, which already uh, the CEO has mentioned. And then we will finally look at the weaknesses and the threats that will help us build on the strategic objectives that we'll be looking at a later stage. Um, I won't uh, cover this uh, section because all the speakers have already expressed what is marked up for and the purpose of the studies. Uh, on overall, we are looking forward to see how the avocado sector in Tanzania can be integrated competitively into international market as this photo shows. MZ in the Kilolo selling avocado for domestic market of uh, questionable quality uh, towards an integrated value chain for the export market on the right. But uh, one important key is that even the domestic uh, market is consuming avocado. Um, this study followed a normal procedure of uh, research. Um, we had a, a number of inception meetings, interactions uh, with the ITC and Taha to square up some of the understanding to make sure that we have a leveled outcome. And then we had an extensive literature review, including the EU market opportunity study that I'll be presenting later, and the value chain for processed the avocado, uh, a previous study done by UNDP, and various Taha studies that are available online. Then we had uh, some prepared some data collection tools, which are standard. Uh, secondary data were sourced from customs department, NBS, regional and the district statistics, as well as trade map and other internet sources. Uh, we followed the normal um, source, I mean, models of collecting data. Uh, we tried as much as possible to cover all the representative of the value chain nodes as much as we could. Um, 
We started the work in Dar es Salaam, where we met a number of uh, companies that are in the value chain. Then we moved to the northern uh, zone, uh, Kilimanjaro and Arusha. From there, we traveled to Iringa, Njombe, Songwe, um, which were represented by the following districts. We went to Hai, Arumeru, Kilolo, Mufindi, Njombe TC, Wangingombe, and Dimbozi. Uh, though we did diverted a bit, uh, we went as far as Rungwe to talk to lead farmers there, uh, Rungwe Avocado and the uh, um, I mean, sorry, Rungwe Avocado and the oh my other company by Robert. Uh, then we interviewed several government offices that is at RAS regional level and at the district level. Uh, we covered all whoever mattered in this area. Then we extended our study by calling or writing emails to Kagera, Kigoma, and Eruvuma because we understand there are a number of initiatives. Sorry? Sorry? Someone is not comfortable? Someone is not comfortable? Proceed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you see the map, it shows in brief the areas we covered, yeah. including the areas we reached. Um, we missed Imara for communication problems, but we had information that uh, Mara has the potential to produce avocado. Uh, the, the, the draft report came out around December, and uh, today we are validating it so you can see the time lag between the study starting July, September, and today is exactly a year. This will influence or will affect the statistics that we'll be presenting. Uh, st let's start with avocado production. Uh, unfortunately, in all the studies, we don't have a good source of production data for avocado, but more encouraging is that NBS has started to collect data now or to include avocado in the annual agriculture surveys. And the first report came in 2017, but it had some questions regarding some regions missing or some having a, what we could say understated data, but it's a good, very positive step. And then we note that there is a wide variation uh, in terms of statistics between the national reports and the regional and the district data. Um, I heard uh, some were speaking of the volumes and uh, turn trade, I think. We need to discuss on, over this. Then we did some projections uh, given certain variables that uh, you can see in the report. Uh, but uh, as um, Tantred, Taha, and others have uh, mentioned there is the fast growth of the sector. We see potentials uh, in Iringa, where large-scale farmers are investing significantly. We see investment in Jombe, where medium and small investors are active. Then in Songwe. Uh, but also we have reports about Ruvuma having even large-scale farmers. And there are several initiatives in Kagera as we speak. Uh, I think we need to do some more work to explore Kigoma, Mara, Tanga, and Morogoro that uh, we know they produce, but not on commercial scale. On the right, we try to estimate the balance sheet of avocado. Uh, there are a lot of numbers there. But in the end, uh, 2018 was selected because then we had a balanced equation in terms of supply and demand, uh, meaning in demand, the markets, and supply, the production data. Uh, we think uh, we had got close to 40,000 metric tons production per year, combining both the additional varieties and the has. We have those provisions uh, there, uh, but it's subject for discussion. But another note is that uh, we import avocado from Burundi, according to official statistics. In 2018, we imported uh, uh, 2,274 tons, uh, unrecorded 
the information is that at certain periods of the year, we also import avocado from Kenya. This was uh, reported by market operators in Mwanza. Um, we may be exporting as well, but the uh, caveat is that you don't see data from Burundi in our Tanzania records, but we saw it under contract from Burundi export. Um, in short, there is potential for regional trade uh, for avocado. Another feature that's of interest on in production is that uh, the seasonality effect, which affects the market potential, uh, is evening out. Uh, first, because of uh, microclimate in areas that are uh, producing avocado, is creating potential for off-season supply. Then uh, we have some lead farmers who innovatively are introducing new varieties that can be produced off-season to lengthen the delivery at the market. Uh, another factor that so far is affecting the production uh, inputs, we have very limited R&D activities in avocado. Uh, fortunately, the seedlings in the Southern Highlands doing well, but in the Northern zone, we don't have a vibrant seedlings uh, industry. Uh, right now it's Africado who dominates the market for quality seedlings. There are other producers like Tangeru, Horticultural Institute, Tari. Um, the prices are around 5,000 shillings per seedling for Africado. But if you go to the Southern Highlands, especially in Jombe, of course we witness the same in Songwe, uh, seedlings production is a commercial uh, ent enterprise. Some nurseries have more than 50,000 seedlings, and the prices range from 2,500 to 15,000 per seedling. You will ask me why. Uh, I think some people from Jombe, when they are doing some comments or feedback, they will highlight. I know the reason, but uh, it would be good for someone to react from that. Then uh, other inputs uh, face the knowledge gap. Uh, fortunately, the social media are doing a great job to help exchange information on inputs. I know Njombe is very active on that, um, part of the networks there. Uh, in, the north, in the northern zone, Africado is the source of knowledge and dependable uh, inputs, uh, certified inputs. I uh, will skip these uh, limitations because we discuss them later. Uh, let's look at the key stakeholders. Who are there in the avocado value chain? If you look at the market system, avocado, like other crops, it is beset by a number of institutions. The laws and regulations, some of them impinge the growth of the sector. And if you look right from the blueprint, you will see a number of uh, constraints uh, that include some of the uh, requirements for export permits. Uh, I know Taha has been working on this and there are some green lights somewhere, uh, but still there is confusion uh, between national and the local regulatory powers as well as uh, costly input certification processes by TPRI and the TOSCI. Uh, if you look at the services markets, they are very limited in scope in every aspect, uh, financial services, irrigation technology services, extension services, uh, packaging materials. And the, <clears throat> briefly, that's what has been uh, um, said by Tantred so the whole the report and what country has and the tar has uh, reflects similar uh, constraints and perhaps this uh, makes strength that we should focus on those limitations uh the avocado subsector map according to our estimates 2019 there could be more than uh, 30,000 farmers of which the medium and large scale are less than 100 so far, according to the size by uh, NBS. Then we have primarily local traders and the brokers. They are, uh, it's a growing segment in the value chain. 
Then we have distant secondary traders. Uh, these are mainly people from urban going to do uh, trading in rural areas. Then it goes on to the urban wholesale markets. Some are for domestic uh, markets, not necessarily the export. Uh, for the export segment from the farm, the avocado goes to pack house, which at the time of the study, we had eight, but I know they have increased. I have a report in the Ringa, one of pack houses that's operating already, which was not there when we were doing the study. Uh, so in brief, the sector is evolving rather fast. The numbers are increasing. As I'm speaking, I know a lot of farms that are opening up, especially in Iringa. Another key stakeholder that we have to pay more attention to, and according to uh, uh, Tantred, CEO, Taha, and the other stakeholders, especially um, the AgriConnect, it's building the capacity of smallholder enterprises to connect to the global market is the certification services. And for this, the observation that there are so many companies who can provide the services, uh, but the cost is a challenge for unorganized smallholder farmers. Then at the same time, we have to make sure that uh, everything uh, is evolves around the UNECE, where there is already a standard number 42, which articulates the minimum requirements for avocados that will be entering EU. This needs to uh, trickle down, this knowledge needs to trickle down to smallholder farmers who are continuously increasing their stake. Uh, just for, for, for reflection, the share of the export market from large farmers has decreased compared to the share of smallholder uh, produced. So the issue of certification will continue to be a challenge over time. Now let's look at the who is there in terms of government and the international agencies. Uh, this information might be lagging behind what Tantred said. Uh, of course, we have the ministry, uh, the Department of Horticulture as the overall policy making body, policy managers, etc. Uh, so far, we have the 20, 20, 20, 12, 2020 horticulture strategy. I'm not sure of what is transpiring right now, apart from what Tantred has told us. But right here, there was uh, a, 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 an information about creating a horticulture development agency. Someone will brief us if there's uh, something going on or is it still fine the pipeline. Then we have Tari. Uh, very unfortunately, the resources are minimum, but the network is there. We have in Tengeru for Northern Zone, Uyore for the Southern Highlands, and uh, Kafililo in Iringa. Uh, there is potential for other research centers like Maruku in Kigoma, uh, sorry, in Kagera. Then we have TPRI, which is doing a good job in terms of uh, looking at the uh, agrochemicals. Uh, they were doing a research when we were in the field to, uh, to establish the potential risk of pesticides in, in Kilimanjaro, which we think and we recommend should be scaled up for other regions. Then we have biological control agency, which we have underutilized significantly in this uh, avocado sector for biological controls. Uh, there is a question of about growing organic. This is where uh, the, the services is greatly needed. Then we have TAFRA, Tanzania Fertilizers Regulatory Authority. Uh, the smallholder farmers would say, you know, you just need the, uh, the manure, but uh, experts suggest that uh, you have to complement it with the industrial fertilizers for certain micronutrients that are missing. Then we have district authorities. They are also having a great lot to pray. Uh, I would cite Njombe to be a model where Njombe, the district uh, office, has a database of farmers, um, very current. They provide extension services, meaning they have specialized people. Uh, they have bought some uh, traps to minimize fruit fry problem. They have uh, soil testing kits, uh, low-cost soil testing kits, and they are very active in supporting 
uh, members of the associations. They have active associations as well. So if there is anywhere we could learn on how to move, especially with the smallholder, it's in Jombe. Uh, so in Irungwe, the district council has set up a park house, which they have rented to a private exporter, which is a good. But uh, there is the water basin offices um, that have to be approached whenever we want to ab abstract water. Unfortunately, these people are lagging behind the development in the sector and discussion around uh, misuse of water sources is emerging. I had a call from NEMC and they were asking if we are taking care of the environmental repercussions of overuse of water, maybe it's another area for discussion. Then uh, we have introduced the TFNC, the Tanzania Food and Nutrition Center. Um, I like to refer to a parable by a Somali novelist who wrote about a necked needle. A necked needle that stitches people's clothes itself remains necked. Let's not focus exporting, 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 forgetting that we are exporting to make uh, importers healthy. Let's look at the impact of what will be the impact on communities in nutrition uh, so that we also sensitize the local community to consume more avocado. Uh, then uh, we have the NBS, which as we said, is the only mandated uh, institution to provide data that we can use. So it's a central or pivotal uh, government body. Uh, I might have not mentioned the trade. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, and the other uh, government departments that are doing a great job in this uh, avocado value chain. Uh, in terms of international agencies, there is Morgan Matunda and uh, USAID Feed the Future. Uh, USAID has done a lot of work. Uh, the current uh, image we have about the avocado, I would attribute it to the effort done by USAID significantly since the 90s up to most recently, maybe two or three years. They were in the field supporting seedlings, dissemination, I mean, distribution, supporting exporters, etc. Then there is the African Caribbean Pacific Liaison Committee, which has been working closely with the TAHA to deliver global gap training. And then uh, in Nonjombe, they have benefited a lot in terms of, uh, they are also supporting TOAM towards the organic uh, avocado, as well as Tansit, a local certifying company. Then there is the AgriConnect, which uh, fortunately, Perini and uh, Anna, they have, Fausto and Anna, they have spoken about it, so there's no need to re redo. Uh, let's look at the avocado export trade. In brief, uh, uh, the Taha CEO, uh, Dr. Jacqueline, has stated the growth, but we just took some few figures that in the US, for example, consumption between 2000 and 2017 increased for almost five times over a span of 17 years. But it really has also increased at an average rate of 11.1 annually. If you look at the, the trade map data, if you look at the graphs there, uh, it, the curves is uh, reflecting an exponential growth, which gives us a very strong opportunity as Tanzania. But as we'll speak later, we will analyze the uh, details of this uh, market in another session. Uh, our exports uh, goes much to France, Netherlands, UK, Kenya. Uh, those are the main, uh, according to data, importers of uh, Tanzania avocado. Uh, Jacqueline shared some information for 2019 and 2020, I think. Uh, the, our study ended up in 2018. So we are talking 10,000. In the report, we have 8,000. If we get the opportunity, we might update this report. Uh, the average uh, unit price in terms of uh, per kilogram, again, I think it was Jacqueline who highlighted the appreciation of the price uh, for the export sector. And there we reflected from interviews in the field from 0 0.47 or 0.48 to almost $1.1 uh, so 
there has been a appreciation in value for at export parity price. Um, now we have some facts on what are the market attractiveness of Tanzania avocado. I will go quickly. And uh, if you look at column number two, first, our proximity to Kenya, which has got a mature market, is a, an important element or fact. Then we have buyers from the north uh, that have increased from Kenya and also Serengeti Fresh has got into the market. We have a wide network of agents uh, uh, almost all over Tanzania that are siphoning or taking the goods. Um, then we have a growing number of exporters. In 2018, I think 17 of them exported uh, avocado, which created competition and improving the farm gate price. We see the expanding value addition in facilities, and uh, uh, Dr. Schumer will be talking on this. And then we, the improvement in terms of logistics. Um, then we have major ports that are close to Middle East, another potential market segment. It may take us hardly 12 days to reach Dubai against around 18 or more days to get to Europe. But it's possible for the Middle East market to bundle with other horticultural products instead of uh, uh, focusing on one product, which can bring about economies of scale. Uh, let's go to the most important part, which fortunately all the speakers, starting with the, uh, the Taha CEO and then Tantred, and Deputy Director General on the profitability of the avocado value chain. But here we are presenting a smallholder commercial farmer business model. We know they are large scale farmers. They will have different dynamics because they have more additional cost to, 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 to put in their uh, supply chain than the smallholder. Uh, quickly, we see the employment creation somewhere if you look at the labor cost in the value chain which get, it gets close to $2,500. We see that per hectare it's possible for a producer to make almost $9,000 per hectare, not per acre. And then the 500 that is pre prevailing which could be a best case scenario. Uh, then in year three, the cash flow stands uh, positive. Uh, these are the incentives for investors, actually. Um, here are the numbers that I think I can skip, but uh, it shows that even exporters and the other bringing in other post harvest uh, transactions, there is significant amount of surplus. Now to finalize, uh, let me share the weaknesses that we have observed in the value chain. Uh, first, as I said, we have challenges with regard to R&D, which is very limited at the present. We talked to Tari. They have been assigned by the ministry to work hard to support avocado, but they had no resource at hand. Um, but still, we see the demand for R&D services, especially due to climate change that will make uh, pests and diseases more potent. And then we have the limitations, uh, weaknesses in terms of agro input supply, uh, especially on the knowledge is limited and that will help us comply with as AgriConnect in the time trade said to the potential markets. Industry guidelines are lacking. Uh, fortunately, time trade spoke of this creating associations. There are no structured systems to guide, monitor, and source uh, and dispose agrochemicals in case of problems. Uh, then on production, farmers are fragmented on overall. And there is a challenge of over expectation in terms of farm gate prices. We don't have very long term data with farmers. They Peak, they enter into the industry because of um, short-term market performance. Um, 
Also, we have heard some farmers who have abandoned their farms because they underinvested. And uh, this is happening in Njombe and maybe other parts as well. Um, the threats on production include lack of transparency in land tenure system, especially in the Southern Highlands. Uh, access to water, as I said, is a growing challenge. Uh, outbreak of pests and diseases. Uh, inability of farmers to comply to, with global gap and as well as inability to implement contract farming. This limits the access to uh, services that otherwise could be offered by lead exporting firms. Uh, in the export, we have uh, so far little or no well-functioning market information system. Thanks for Tantred mentioning this and I think they will put more weight on this. And then there is lack of exporters organization to invest in market intelligence. Maybe we underline this market intelligence. It is a needed a threat on, on, on the export business uh, starts with competition. We are not alone in the world. The market signals we are learning are global. People may be reacting. They have capital, etc. So let's stay ahead of the pack. Then there is lack of business code of ethics, uh, which normally uh, affects many crops. Uh, the, the, there is a possibility for political interference in the market system, especially as the crop becomes prominent. And uh, finally, the port of Dar es Salaam is a challenge. Uh, right now, I think all the avocado is being shipped uh, through Mombasa and very little by air. Uh, support services, I think I have spoken of this uh, in terms of limited scope. Um, I can skip this amount of time. Let's go to the recommendations. Uh, given the findings, our recommendations in the short term is first to focus on organizing value chain players, organizing them into effective export centric associations that can help first establish voluntary code of conduct in the industry and how it will be enforced. I know the boards have got acts, laws, but here let's get uh, the laws and the acts as a secondary stage, but initially let's go for voluntary code of conduct. I, I, we can learn from either our neighbors in Kenya, what are they doing, or in South Africa, where the associations are quite strong. Then through these associations, it will be possible for the farmers to access more knowledge, especially the global gap services. And it's happening in Jombe already, but maybe at a low level with the NSHDA association. And then with the same token in the short term, we should focus on attracting investment from various entities. Uh, again, we have to address the issue of irrigation. It's a pertinent issue uh, in terms of improving yield per tree. Uh, we have to consolidate information about risks. As I said, TPRI has uh, been working with ECP in Kenya to map the potential risks of pests in avocado, but this was limited for Kimajaro. I think as a team, as a program, let's look at this as a big risky issue. And then uh, comes uh, the promotion of export market. Uh, Fortunately, later has addressed this very well, but maybe the strategies have to be discussed. How? Because uh, we have been pushing products or doing marketing from the production mode. Now we have to be in the market, doing the market intelligence, sending the signals back. Um, then uh, also we have to, if possible, support the port to appreciate the Dar es Salaam port to appreciate the significance of avocado so that they can invest in the shipping of perishables, especially avocado. And there are a number of issues that were raised by stakeholders. I can't discuss them here in time. You know, it's very limited. Uh, in the long term, in the medium term, I think we have to invest in the R&D. Uh, there are many areas, including a new breed of uh, access to new breed of avocado. Then also we should be develop an information system. 
uh, looking, mapping at the market the, uh, trends and patterns. And finally, we should recommend uh, a feasibility study for air cargo business. And a point to note here, many people are thinking avocado will be shipped by air, but there's a very small percent globally, a very small percent at a certain specific time of the year when demand is too high and there is shortage in the market, they can afford. It costs almost $2 to airlift a kilo of avocado to Europe. So it's not a mainstream uh, logistical um, means. Um, then we have to also uh, think of, and I heard sometime the minister was talking of establishing an accredited laboratories so that we reduce the cost of getting the services from abroad. As I said, let's bring on board TFNC to see the, the nutritional impact of the whole development on the local uh, population. Let's not just push for export. Are we pushing people or raising awareness, sensitizing people to consume avocado locally? I remember reading a newspaper sometime in a neighboring country, they had halted export to protect the domestic market. Uh, and then uh, there are issues to do with improved business environment. Uh, thank you very much, AgriConnect. Uh, they will pick on this. Uh, with that, I thank you everyone for your keen audience. You are welcome for comments. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, that is a powerful presentation and uh, um, very good insights on um, salient issues relating to uh, avocado fresh sector. Um, uh, yeah, you have um, covered almost all the aspects that are relating to uh, fresh sector from production. Uh, and you have made some touches on uh, on marketing. And just to summarize, um, a very brief summary, uh, you have spoken about uh, the main producing areas in avocado. We all know about the Southern Highlands and the Northern parts of Tanzania being the leaders, especially when it comes to uh, commercial production of av avocados and mainly for export markets. And uh, uh, surprisingly, we are also importing some avos, especially from Burundi and Kenya, at some periods of the year. And that also uh, coincides when you look uh, at price trends, uh, you find some months of the year where we, where we are having um, very high prices of avocados. And uh, that is when we, 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 we do make some importation. Um, and you have highlighted on production issues, especially on uh, imports. We all know about the challenges that are relating to uh, production, availability, and supply of seedlings. And this is a very important aspect because, you know, uh, you are going to know exactly how will your fruit look like after three years after planting. And like vegetables where you plant today and in three months you have this. Now by the time you know that you had planted the wrong uh, seedling, uh, it is already too late. So this is an important aspect. Uh, biological control agent, uh, uh, this is also important, especially in making our products more organic. Uh, you have also highlighted on the structure uh, of the of the value chain, the players and their interconnectivity, uh, with large farmers having a strong productive uh, integration uh, with medium and uh, small uh, players. Uh, this is actually a typical example about how. Uh, the, the, the big and small uh, can integrate and uh, establish a symbiotic relationship. Um, yeah, there are also some general issues that you have shared and uh, uh, Dr. Mkindi as well as 
the uh, uh, DG uh, Latifa, they also shared some insights on uh, on the avocado sector in general. Um, one of the fastest growing uh, uh, crop subsectors in this country at the moment. Uh, we, you have also uh, shared about the institutions that are involved. Uh, there's a long list of um, of government institutions that are involved in, in the development of horticultural industry, uh, but each and one of uh, and every one of them having a peculiar responsibility, and this is very very important as they uh, they, 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 they uh, do so in addressing uh, the various uh, issues that are relating to development of, of avocado industry. Uh, and uh, about exports, uh, you have shared about the main uh, destinations, uh, the average prices. Uh, this is also an important, an, an important aspect we have seen uh, about average prices increasing in the past uh, decade. Uh, uh, and uh, I think the, the common issue about the prices that you've presented are they uh, are they you know FOB or CIF? Uh, and uh, I think during discussions you can be able to expound on that uh, profitability of our value chains. We uh, discussed about that as well. Uh, with values increasing, profit, uh, profitability values increasing as years progress. And uh, profitability actually depends on the level of investment and the application of technologies and uh, good agricultural practices. Uh, that are key factors in, uh, in, in determining uh, the levels of yields. Uh, you have also highlighted on weaknesses and uh, you finished by uh, recommending on uh, key interventions uh, that can be deployed to reform the uh, avocado sector. So this is mainly uh, about production uh, side of, of avocado and uh, we will uh, we'll get more information, uh, more insights on the value chain uh, when we have presentations on the, uh, on the market and the processing side. Uh, so we are um, about 160 participants in this platform. Uh, it may be a little bit difficult to uh, to, to, to have uh, uh, verbal uh, comments to, 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 to allow people to speak. Uh, but let me take this opportunity uh, to invite um, uh, two or, uh, or, or, or three uh, practitioners uh, to give uh, their practical insights on what is happening on the ground. Uh, by the way of commenting uh, on the content that has been shared. Uh, but in any case, please, if you have any comments, I see uh, many of the participants uh, are submitting their comments on the chat and we will address uh, most of, of your comments and questions as much as we can. Uh, but in the meantime, let me ask if there is uh, someone uh, from uh, uh, from the practice, practice site, uh, producer, a producer, or an exporter of avocado, uh, please, uh, you, are, you are welcome. Yeah, so just raise your hand and we will get you in and uh, submit your, your comments or questions. Yeah, so uh, introduce yourself, your name, and the uh, company you are, uh, you are representing. Okay, we, thank you. Yeah, we also thank understand that some of the participants in this room, uh, they, they do not uh, uh, speak or understand well English. Uh, so we are having an interpreter who will make some of the things for him. So please, you're welcome. 
your videos. Okay. Thank you, uh, the organizers, for this very important webinar. Uh, I think it's the first of, the, of its kind in Tanzania, especially for us who are growing uh, avocado. Um, I am a grower of avocado. Uh, this is my, my sixth year. I've been uh, investing in this avocado in Jombe. And um, I've, I've gone through um, different challenges up to date. And now uh, I thank God that we have already started to, you know, to sell our, our products in the market. And um, I had some, I was, this was very interesting, but I, I had some my questions which I want to know because this study is similar, it's just a, it's such a general study. It didn't focus on, on, a, on a specific variety of avocado because it's talking about the, you know, different varieties of avocado. But I, I wonder whether we could get really a specific study or we'll probably even the president can, can explain to us whether a specific study on the as avocado because this is where everyone is looking at and uh, we'd like to know where we are, we are hearing to. By second, um, my observ observation experience in this business it has been a challenge is, uh, is, on, is on the quality and how, because we can, many people think that you can just plant avocado tree and then wait, wait to go to harvest and have, you know, products here in the market, which is really technically very wrong. And there are a lot of things that need to be done for you to be able to produce, you know, quality products. And we are also seeing a lot of competition or although we want, we want to, to also to, to compete in the market, but the quality is, is, is an issue. For instance, this year we, we produced, um, I, I think many of the, of, the, of the farmers of the avocado, especially in the, in the Southern Island, you know, produced, you know, um, uh, rejects, a lot of, of them were rejects. And we also have seen uh, other examples like in Kenya where you know, the, the, the avocado was banned for, for some, for, I think for a year or two because of the um, exporting, um, you know, you know um, immature fruits to, 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 the, to the European market. So I was wondering products to the market and be competitive as the country. Thank you. On application of good effective practices. Uh, but also uh, the investment level. So thank you very much. We will respond to your questions when we do the discussions. So uh, is there any other practitioner? Please uh, raise your hand. Okay. So if yeah, so if there is none, uh, let me. Uh, invite our uh, interpreter uh, to give uh, just a brief uh, overview of what has been uh, presented uh, in Swahili. Oh there, oh, there are a few other hands. Okay, please. Jubilate. Jubilate, please, you're welcome. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Yes, you can. Yes, yes, Jubilate. Oh, thank, thank, thank you very much. Uh, one of the big challenges that we face as farmers is um, the requirement to use organic fertilizers. Um, can, you please, can you please advise us on availability of fertilizers, um, you know, where we could get them, uh, what companies produce or sell organic fertilizers because um, really most farmers do not have uh, the knowledge of where to find these fertilizers uh, apart from simply relying on manure. So I'd love to have a word on that. Okay, we have experts in this room and they'll be, they'll be able to respond. Uh, yeah, any other question? So if there is none. Yeah, um, I, Damas, can you please respond um, on Jubilate's concern about getting the organic fertilizers? Sorry, 
Oh, okay, so uh, yeah, Damas will respond whenever uh, he is ready. So yeah, uh, at the moment, let me invite uh, Edith to, uh, to, 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 to give a, a, a summary of what has been uh, presented and discussed. Okay, in, in maybe uh, before, before uh, the interpreter comes in, maybe Chesco Nande can lead us on um, where we can get the organic fertilizers. Welcome, Chesco. Chesco. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Max and uh, the Taha management for this uh, meeting. Actually, can you go direct to the point? Uh, you know, sometimes the, this organic fertilizer is very tricky. And now we have a lot of uh, I mean, uh, organic fertilizer and the people that are just talking and some of them that are not uh, uh, in, in ad inadequate for agriculture. But now we have one organic fertilizer from the company called the Israeli Chemicals Fertilizer, is the M&M Partners. Uh, and even last week we are together in Irungwe. They are talking this called the, the fertilizer called the polysulfate. So if we can, you, you, if we if we can visit their website called www.icl.fertilizers, then you can see the that in organic fertilizers. And also, I can send the number of the uh, ICL uh, senior agronomist here in Tanzania through the chat box. Thank you. Fertilizers. I understand that they have uh, some fertilizers uh, that are suitable for avocado production. So uh, let me invite uh, Edith to do uh, a bit of Swahili uh, translation. Habari ya asubuhi. Anitafanya nitafanya summary ya jumuisho nilopita ambalo nilikuwa linaongelea linahusu uh, linahusu utafiti uliofanyika wa uh, mnyororo wa thamani wa, uh, wa parachichi hapa Tanzania na faida zake kwa wa Tanzania na kwa wadau uh, wasilisho hili limeongelea mambo mengi ambayo yalihusishwa wameonyesha maeneo ambayo walipita wameonyesha pia soko la kidunia la parachichi likoje wameonyesha uh, wadau wengi mbalimbali ambao wako kwenye soko la parachichi pamoja na mifumo ya masoko lakini pia wameonyesha uh, uzalishaji ulivyo hapa Tanzania na hali hali ya uzalishaji inavyoendelea wameelezea pia jinsi ambavyo patikanaji wa, wa miche ulivyo pamoja na pendejeo mbalimbali lakini pia wameelezea matatizo yaliyoko kwenye hii biashara wameelezea pia masuala muhimu katika mambo ya kufanya certification ili mazao yetu ya parachichi yaweze kupata soko huko nje uh, mwisho kabisa wameelezea changamoto zilizopo Mwisho kabisa wamelezea changamoto mbalimbali zilizopo kwenye hili soko na kutoa ushauri wa namna gani ambavyo tunaweza kupambana na hizi changamoto. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sana. sana Edith. Um, eh, yeah, ta tafadhali eh, kwa wale ambao hawazungumzi Kiingereza Eh, una hata kwenye maswali na maoni unaweza tu ukaweka kwa Kiswahili na eh, tutaweza eh, kufanyia kazi na kushughulikia so uh, we we will have uh, enough time later uh, during the day to address uh, to comprehensively address the uh, uh, questions and comments that have been submitted in the chat. Um, and at this uh, uh, moment, let me uh, invite Ndeoya uh, to proceed with moderating uh, 
uh, the next session, uh, which is on uh, the action plan to develop the Tanzania uh, fresh avocado uh, sector. So from the findings uh, that have been uh, presented, uh, we have uh, designed uh, an action plan um, uh, and uh, we will be happy to share with you uh, what we think are uh, uh, some of the uh, key interventions to revamp uh, avocado fish sector. So please, Doria. Uh, yes, please. Thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chamanga. And thank you, uh, all the participants, uh, for the engaging discussion. Uh, I would like now to invite uh, Mr. Ebron Mokalinga to present uh, the next session. Um, yeah, welcome, Mr. Ebron. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chamanga. Just, uh, I'm trying to load the other screen. Can you stop the previous share screen, please? It is stopped. Uh, okay. Try to stop it from your hand and launch your current presentation. Okay. Is it shared? Hello? Continue, can you continue? We can share, we can see your screen. Uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chamanga. Um, here follows a presentation on the market opportunity in the EU for the fresh avocado. It was done by my, co my colleague, Alan, and I'm going to present on his behalf. Um, um, is there anything you should do at that end to allow me to scroll? Hello? Yes, uh, I can't scroll. Is there anything I should do? Or I should stop and restart? Uh, can, can we uh, stop and restart? OK. Let me stop, OK. I'll make sure. OK. Is that OK? Not yet. It's can we share? Not, uh, just a second. Let me share. What about now? We can see the screen. Can you, uh, maybe please proceed, proceed to the next slide. Okay, thank you. Mm, again, I can't scroll. Okay, um, if you can go on and then we'll share from our screen, please. Is it possible? Yes. Can you stop sharing? I stop, I stop sharing your screen, Mr. Edward. Okay. Oh. You can proceed with presentation, Mr. Hebron, as we launch your presentation. 
Hello. Uh, I can hear you, but uh, it appears it is stuck on my screen here. Yes, um, it's just go on. We will show from. We will share from our screen. I need to see the screen in order to continue presenting. Eh? Should I just use my? Okay. Can you see the screen? Uh, I, I can see the screen, but is it from you or me? It is from our side. I can scroll from this end, yeah? Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Another, good, another good morning, another good morning. Please proceed. Yes, we are this, is, this is Hebron again, um, participating from Dar es Salaam. Um, let's start with introduction of the study on the EU market for fresh avocado. Can you see our screen? Yes, I can. Okay, now we'll get as, as we, which slide you'd like to present? Maybe if you want to say, maybe just say next. Uh, okay. The introduction will cover key findings, the seasonality effect that we discussed earlier, the EU import trends at two seasons, the summer and the winter supply seasons, and then we will reflect on world production. And also we'll talk of, about the exporters and the importers. Next. Uh, this might take us some time. Can we restart? I should share from this end. Uh, well, the slide number three, please go on. I'm still with slide number one. Number two, sorry. Maybe. Uh, Let me stop the share and then I, I will. Uh, you, you stop sharing at your end, yeah. Let, let us share. Okay. Please. Okay. Are you able to see me? Yes, but we you can see. The Slide number three. Um, I think Hebron, you can just go on with the audio and we, we, are, we are sharing our screen from our end. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, yes, just go on with the audio. Yeah, key findings on the European market. First, as everyone has heard, consumption of avocado is close to 1 million tons which has doubled over the last five years. I mean, from around 500,000 to almost a million. Predictions are that the growth in the European market will continue for the next 10 years, though other reports put it at 15 years. Growth. The UK, Germany, and the Eastern Europe are the markets that offer the highest potential. The EU market has a few large scale retailers and the food service supply companies. Importers and wholesalers are consolidating their activities. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mangalinda. Yes, sir. Yeah, we are sharing the screen from our hand. I don't know if you can see it. I'm on screen number three. Okay, so when you are done with your uh, when you are done with the presentation, just say next so that we can go to the next page. Uh, let let me correct. Uh, the drivers for demand in Europe are the health concerns. That's the health consumption. Uh, rise in vegetarianism or veg vegan diets. Uh, you moved very fast. 
Hello? Yes, she's gone. Number three. And then there is uh, endorsement by celebrities for health living. Uh, now, someone asked me, asked the, the audience, sorry, why do we focus on hers and not other varieties? Here is the point. The general market prefers the dark skin hers variety to green skin varieties. This responds to uh, a question by Rugahema Jovi, Jovitus, as well as another uh, a participant who shared the a chat that why are we just focusing on uh, us and not on local market? Here is the answer. Yeah. Next. Uh, on global production, in 2018, we see Mexico uh, producing most of the avocado uh, that we have on the globe, followed by Dominican Republic, which is far smaller, but is producing more than half, almost two thirds of a million. You see Peru, half a million, Indonesia, 400, Colombia. And then we have our neighbors, Kenya, with more than 2,034,000 metric tons. Next. Yeah, now the import trends for the summer and the winter supplies. In the winter, most supplies, I will read the figures for 2018, come from Mexico, uh, followed by Chile and Israel, as well as Spain, which is closer to Europe. So it's a big competitor in case we manage to supply in winter for European market. Uh, None of our East African neighbors, not even South Africa, is a big player for winter supply. In summer, that's where East Africa comes in. But still Mexico dominates the market, followed by Peru. Then we see South Africa and Kenya, which will be normally reflecting even Tanzania. Uh, if you look at the figure, Tanzania is on the extreme right, delivering uh, 5,000 metric tons in 2018. So this is our window for export. Next. The leading avocado exporting nations. As we said, it has been Mexico, but strangely, exports for 2018 dropped. Uh, we don't have a reason right now. But what we also know, Mexico is the biggest consumer as well of avocado. Then strangely followed by the Netherlands, whose export is growing. But Netherlands is not a producer of avocado in net terms, but it's a center for marketing of perishable. Then we have Peru. You can see Peru, the growth is relatively steep. I mean, it's uh, competing very well in the global market. Then we have Spain, which uh, the supply has plateaued over time. And then we have Chile, fortunately, uh, there was a strong growth followed by, uh, fo followed by Chile. US exports very little. And then we have our neighbors, Kenya and South Africa. Next. Importing nations, uh, as uh, indicated, US leads with the highest growth of close or more than, uh, in value terms, more than 2 billion worth of avocado. But again, responding to the supply in, in, in Mexico, the, in 2018, figure dropped. Uh, much of the Mexican export ends up in the US. Then we have Netherlands in value terms. They are again exporting close to 500 million worth of avocado. Then there is France. All these are re exporting countries, including Germany. Maybe Spain does production. 
sorry, sorry. These are importing countries. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so this is the market for EU starts from Netherlands, France, Germany, Spain, UK. This is the target market we are talking about. Next. Now, part two, we look at the EU market in a bigger detail. Uh, at national level, sorry, yeah. Uh, we see UK being the largest importer and there has been a very fast growth in terms of imports in metric tons, very sharp growth. So even the recommendation was that the UK should be a target market. Then we see Netherlands, Germany, France, and Italy. All these larger importers, they show a sharp growth between 2014 and 2018. Next. Who supplies uh, avocado to Europe? Our target market, target number one. Of course, we are targeting other uh, places as well. So we find that Peru holds 36% of the export market share. Is followed by Chile at 16. Our neighbor Kenya has six. And uh, of course, South Africa is more competitive, has 11. Next. Uh, the price trend for avocado, just as we noted from other presentations, even in the domestic market, has been increasing the same at the same pace as production, which is a very, very strong signal of high demand. When both the supply and the price appreciate, there's a very, very uh, strong signal for a very strong demand in the market. Uh, you could see the prices has appreciated from around $8 per box, a four kilo box, towards more than $12 in 2018. And if you look at the statistics from 2012 to 2018, it gives you a picture of a near long-term trend. So it's not just a short-time uh, market win. Next. Um, EU market hubs. This is important as we think of maybe establishing our presence in the market. Uh, the main primary ports of entry to Europe are the Netherlands, France, Spain, UK, and Belgium. Belgium is coming up recently. The Netherlands, first in itself, is a small market, but it is a major distribution hub for all, I would say, horticultural produce in Europe. So it's a very strategic uh, uh, point. Dutch exporters offer door-to-door -door delivery system to any destination in Europe. So you are in the Netherlands, you are already in Europe. The UK has access to an efficient distribution system servicing supermarkets. On the other hand, uh, Spain is both a producer and an importer, also a distributor of horticultural crops to other European nations. Uh, it has developed a very good uh, transport system that rivals the Netherlands. So it could be considered again uh, for point of entry for our avocado. Next. Uh, overview of European market opportunity assessment for fresh avocados. Next. Oh, sorry. This... Uh, slide has been a little bit garbled, uh, but we can read um, the market opportunities for fresh avocado based on 
input volumes. Uh, can we skip this slide because the figures are a little bit? Um, go to the next, please. Uh, the distribution chain. This is important for all who are in the business to understand the supply chain. Everyone out of this supply chain has to claim some dollars in the value chain. So you are not alone. There are a lot of players, starting with the port operators, clearing agents in Europe, uh, haulage companies, importers who also may be ripening. They are repacking. They have to ship it to the Qataras depots, the supermarkets or wholesale markets. Then there are transporters to supermarket stores, institutions, hotels, restaurants, and the food outlets. All have to get money from your kilo of avocado coming from Hai, from Rungwe, from Jombe, etc. Next. Uh, maybe before you go, let's reflect previous previous slide. No? Yeah, here there is an interesting information on the right regarding the normal shipping time for selected countries in the UK market. From Peru, it takes 18 days. From Colombia, 13 days and 10 hours. Uh, sorry, another message is that look at the precision. They are talking of days plus hours. Then in Mexico, Dominican, from Kenya, where we ship out our um, avocado, it takes 18 days and the six hours. Uh, to the guy who asked why only has, I think it is only has, not maybe not only has, which can survive that much long, but it's the most stable fruit. Uh, if we are to ship the fruit via Middle East, it will take 24 days. Thank you, next. Uh, here, we are looking at the Netherlands, which we said is the most active hub for fresh produce. Uh, you can see it receives avocado from almost all over the world, but led by Peru, which has increased its supply from 44 in 2014 to almost 120. This is three times. Chile has not grown very far, but it has grown. South Africa it has grown, but not much. Kenya has made a, a, a larger uh, supply between almost three times again, no, four times, three times. Uh, Israel is a stable supplier, not a growth uh, supplier. Tanzania, by percentage wise, we could say we have increased close to twice, but from a very low base. Here is the opportunity to be part of near 300,000 imports in the Netherlands. Next. Next. Next, please. Hello. Hello? Am I disconnected? Hello? Hello, uh, Dismas. I'm checking, am I disconnected? You, you are not disconnected. I think he, we have... Uh a problem of connection from Taha. I don't see the PowerPoint presentation. Um, yes, let, let me attempt to reload the mine. Okay, please.
Mr. Hebron. Yes. You can you can proceed. Uh, have you solved the problem? No, we are we are in the process, but you can proceed. Uh, you can proceed with the audio. Then, in a while, we upload the presentation. Okay, let me go to the right page. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at trends now. Uh, we have checked about Netherlands, the Netherlands. Uh, friends is another second uh, important entry, market entry point for avocado. It gets avocado from Peru again, uh, Spain, Israel, Mexico, uh, South Africa, and Kenya and Chile, and the other countries, including Tanzania. Uh, we don't see a very sharp growth for the French market as compared to the Netherlands. Um, in total, France imported one, almost 160,000 metric tons in 2018, uh, an increase from almost 120,000 in 2014. Uh, it's it's a, a significant growth, but not does not rival the Netherlands. In Germany, another important importer of avocado, they import close to 93,000, they imported closer to 93,000 metric tons of avocado in 2018. And the major suppliers again has been Peru, Chile, Spain, and the Netherlands, that's uh, Netherlands the exports to Germany, a considerable amount. There has been significant growth in Germany compared to uh, France, just as it was proposed in, in the other presentations that is a, a target market. And uh, the supply season coincides with ours, I mean, in, in, with our neighbors, Kenya. So it's a growing, fast growing market, Germany. And then Let's have a quick look at the Scandinavian countries as a destination market. In total, in 2018, they imported close to 220,000 metric tons from uh, a total of 153,000 in 2014 which is an increase of 70,000, close to 50% growth over a period of four years. A very strong growth, Scandinavian countries. Norway gets much of its fruits from Chile and the Peru, but other countries as well will supply it, including our neighbor, Kenya. Uh, Denmark, gets much of its avocado from the Netherlands, then Spain, and the UK. Those re-export figures we saw earlier are being shipped to Denmark. And uh, the growth in Denmark has been significant, but not as sharp as in the aggregate uh, figure for Europe. Then we have Sweden which consumes a significant amount out of all these uh, Scandinavian countries. It leads by uh, consuming almost 70,000 metric tons of avocado uh, that was registered in 2018. The growth is strong, but not as much. Then we have Finland, which is smaller, but maybe per capita it consumes more avocado because they imported close to 30,000 metric tons in 2018. Again, 
uh, Finland is a high growth uh, market. So on overall, Scandinavia could be a, a good targeted, a target market in the EU. Then we have the EFTA market for fresh avocados import. Um, now, Mokaringa. Yes. Do you see my screen? Uh, let me check. Yes. Okay, so I can proceed from that angle. Let me know which slide you are so I can fix. Next. Next one. Next. Next. Okay. Next. 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 Uh, next. Uh, can we use stop there? Okay. Uh, next, sorry, next. Okay. Next, we just have finished this Scandinavian market. Okay. And then we have the EFTA market. Um, um, I, I don't have the long form of EFTA. I hope someone will help. But countries that are indicated there are Switzerland and Iceland. They are small consumers of avocado and the, the population of these countries is relatively small. So, however, uh, per capita consumption uh, growth they will register, they want to amount to a very significant market. Uh, but could be for niche markets, especially on organic products. Next. Previous. Because this one. Okay. Now we are done. Next. Okay. Yeah. Then there is the Eastern Europe market, which has been mentioned to be very potential in other writings. You will see the Russian Federation uh, increasing its consumption by more than uh, 50% in just four years. And given the size of the population and the economy, this should be a very prime target for any country um, trying to expand market in Europe. It's followed by Poland, which has also increased consumption almost double over four years. We have smaller consumers like Romania with a strong growth as well, uh, Czech Republic, on overall, there is strong growth in the Eastern Europe market. Next. Uh, Poland in itself has been analyzed. Uh, as we said, it's a high growth market. It gets much of the avocado from the Netherlands, from Germany, and uh, from Slovenia. You could see most of the deliveries to Poland market are re-exports from within EU. This again is an opportunity for countries like Tanzania to penetrate in such a market. And possibly we might be cost competitive. Next. Why lost you? Yes, definitely. You, you can proceed while we are setting it in. Some technical challenge. Um, the next screen, I uh, mean, the next uh, part, part focuses on competitor analysis for fresh avocados in European market. And this is a, a very uh, important part for uh, Taha, for Tantrid, while strategizing on how to penetrate into the market for Tanzania avocado. Um, first, the one competing uh, dimension is on the seasonality of supply. We see that Haas is supplied 
uh, from many countries, starting with Australia. Australia delivers has from April to January. So it's a very long span they can deliver to market. Another variety called Shepherd is delivered between February and May, which is a very long window, a very short window. And then we have Fuete between April and September. Again, responding to someone who said, why has uh, is the market that demands and the window for export. And uh, much of Australia's avocado goes to the Asian countries, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Indonesia. So whenever we're thinking of expanding to that area, let's consider Australia as our biggest competitor. And then we have Brazil, who supplies uh, avocado in April and September, supplying uh, the Netherlands, Spain, France, and Canada. So we meet in the Spain and the Netherlands market, as well as France. These are our competitors. And the timing coincides with ours, April to September. Then we have Chile. Uh, fortunately, they supply from September to March. That's our off season for our house. But for Fuete, they bring in the market from June to September. So our house will compete with Fuete from Chile in that period, as well as a variety called Bacon. Will also come, it comes also in the market in, between May and July. It, from Colombia, they bring in has from September to May, and they are able to sell almost 30,000 in the market. And then we have the Dominican Republic, which we have mentioned that is a small one, but produce significant amount. Uh, they produce has during August, they deliver to market has during August to May. They have another variety that covers October to January, the green skin local variety. And there was a question why did we focus on uh, local varieties? Maybe we need to do some work just as they do in Dominican Republic. But consider the time it takes to ship from Dominican Republic vis-a-vis -vis Tanzania. And then uh, we have the competitor analysis for the East Africa. Uh, looking at uh, Kenya, Rwanda, and Tanzania. Uh, Tanz Kenya delivers has to the market from April to September, and it has increased uh, its production area. Kenya has increased its production area from 1, 136 hectares. No, no, no. From 8,400 hectares to 11 and the output has increased from 136,000 to almost close to 200,000 tons in 2017. Rwanda also produces and the markets uh, avocado but they hardly produce uh, 7,000 metric tons. Someone asked uh, was it yesterday? What about data for Tanzania from FAO? Unfortunately, as far as I have researched, we didn't have data on production from FAO. So below maybe estimates. I need to be corrected on this. Uh, still with the competitiveness within East Africa, we see Kenya being far ahead in terms of export. In 2017, they exported 77,000, close to 78,000 metric tons. Uh, to to various countries in the in the EU, 
and other countries. But their main uh, destination market, Kenya, was France, followed by, point to note, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Russian Federation, Egypt, and others. Yeah, this shows that, uh, okay, we can broaden our market, uh, not just to rely mainly on Europe. While Tanzania, so far we have focused in Europe, and we exported almost a tenth of what Kenya exported. And this answers the question that many people are asking. What if Tanzania floods the market? We are a very tiny player in the market such that our investment cannot at all influence the world market supply. Let's have the confidence to continue investing in avocado. And then we have Israel, which is uh, not a very significant player uh, because they export almost 20,000 metric tons in 2018. But Israel is a, a home uh, of research, R&D, in avocado. Even the varieties we have, they were brought in from Israel sometime in the 80s by the support of the Dutch government. And then we have Mexico. Uh, Mexico, as we said, relies heavily on the US market, which takes more than 80% of its produce. And then other countries, are Canada, Japan, those are significant markets for Mexico. We compete uh, with Mexico in certain countries in the EU, but uh, to a small extent. You can see Japan, uh, sorry, Netherlands gets in 2018, got hardly 16,000 uh, metric tons. The same for Spain and France. So I would say Mexico is not, we are not head on in terms of competition with Mexico in EU at present. Peru is a significant player uh, producing more than 500,000 tons. For 2017, they produced uh, 400,000 uh, uh, 400, tons, more than 400,000 tons in 2017. Uh, they enter the market almost throughout the year, but they are conspicuous in May to September for us and April to September for Fuete. These are big competitors. Uh, South Africa, um, again, they are also competing with us from March to September. And uh, there has been very limited growth in terms of acreage from in South Africa, as well as production. I think they had some climate or weather related uh, issues that uh, uh, made the production decline. But it's important to note that the South African investors are almost everywhere on, on the globe investing in avocado. Then we have Spain, as we said, is the biggest supplier, I mean, producer in Europe. It's proximity and it's a good infrastructure. They deliver foods in December to May and October to February for Fuete. Uh, Spain. And uh, continues to export, re export, and the other deliveries almost all over Europe. There are figures that even South Africa received some avocado from Spain. It could be an issue of seasonality. Uh, I think we can skip US, it's not our target market for now. Um, but for let's see what opportunities are there and recommendations. The first uh, summary is that the uh, EU market has quadrupled over the past, past 10 years. In value terms, the market has increased from 265 million USD to almost 1.2 billion over just 10 years. 
it is observed that if UK population will consume one extra fruit per season per year, the demand will increase by over 16,000 metric tons, an equivalent of 800 containers. Imports into Europe have, as we observed, increased significantly. But despite the increase in quantity, as we observed, the prices continued to remain high. So Tanzania avocado producers must respond to these new market challenges to adapt if they are to maintain and increase their market share. That's one recommendation. The producers must respond to the new market challenges and adapt if they are to maintain and increase their market share. We heard from Tantrade, they summarized the challenges as well as my report. Strong leadership and the discipline underline here, the strong leadership and the discipline are essential if Tanzania is to build a reputation for high quality avocado. And if we want to expand our, I think this, uh, I, I, I support what Tantrade said uh, on focusing on branding Tanzania avocado. Uh, Tanzania exporters should adapt strategies to uh, related to environment in fruit marketing. Uh, Tanzania exporters should adapt strategies to the changing environment in fruit marketing and improve post harvest practices. That's where market intelligence I was talking about comes in. Drivers to increase of avocado supply. Uh, as people continue to be obese and other health issues, uh, avocado is becoming more important as an alternative uh, source of uh, uh, healthy food. There are issues to do with sustainability and the corporate social responsibilities, ethical sourcing and the trading, certification of quality standard, such as grass, and especially BRC, they are now of paramount importance for the most difficult markets. That UK, Netherlands, Germany, uh, etc., are becoming difficult as consumers become more concerned with the social and the environmental issues. Um, there is a recommendation that Tanzania should be use, utilize uh, organic certification services, including those availed by fair trade. We have to struggle as Tanzania to improve quality standards and offer reliability with the shipment and long-term agreements. This is very critical. Uh, we, it is recommended that France is a fruit hub for Europe with excellent distribution and logistic systems, and there could be a market to target other European markets. Um, maybe the consultant has seen some space. We saw the Netherlands, it's a strategic position. We saw Belgium also emerging, uh, as well as Spain, but it's recommended that we should also look into France. There is an opportunity for further expansion during summer season in Germany as a consuming market, and they're still low compared to other EU markets. The Germans are consuming very little, but they, there's very potential there. And there is opportunity to counter the fires competition if the current political relations between, uh, I think this we should skip, uh, in Scandinavia, Organic and the trade fair certifications are becoming increasingly important. Back to the recommendations on quality. As, as well as Scandinavia is the highest consuming group of uh, avocado in the EU. So it should be uh, on our radar. Uh, uh, also, Scandinavian are well documented aware of health issues and they demand organic produce. I think Denmark is the largest in terms of percent of consumer of organic products on earth. 
Uh, with that, I thank you everyone who managed to listen to this presentation and anticipate the recommendations. Thank you very much. Back to the facilitator, Mr. Chamanga. Hello? Hello? Asante Sana Hebron, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Now we are going to the question and the answer session. I would like you to invite our colleagues from Taha to lead us in that uh, session. The Oya, can you proceed, please? The Oya, Maxi. We have a technical problem. Mr. Mokalinga, we can proceed with the question and the answer session. Uh, I think it's an opportunity to, to hear something from our, from participant. And please feel free to raise your hand so that you can have an opportunity to, to air your, your views or if you have a question. Okay. Now we have a challenge. Okay. One second, please. I'll be back. We are trying to solve this technical challenge. Then we will proceed shortly. Mr. Mokalinga, you can proceed to provide some insight mm -hmm. on the questions. Um, we have a question from uh, from Okay, let me see. Uh, Makalinga. Now, uh, I can respond to the previous questions. Yes, please, proceed with, with that one. Yeah. Why we have this technical problem?